Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist uh, in York, and today I wanted to do a video on the on exercise in AFib. Exercise in AFib, in particular, this video is about the benefits of exercise in patients with atrial fibrillation. Um, <clears throat> Um, so, we know that patients with atrial fibrillation often have comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, etc. And we also know very well that exercise is beneficial in terms of reducing some of these comorbidities or the burden of these comorbidities. So, if you have high blood pressure, we know exercise is very good to reduce blood pressure. If you are overweight, we know exercise is good for that. Um, but what we don't know is whether exercise is good for AFib or not. Um, <clears throat> uh, and often people worry about exercising because they worry about bringing on episodes of AFib. Uh, and there is also considerable evidence that people who do a lot of exercise, high-level endurance training, um, you know, ultra marathons, very intense cycling, etc., in those people, there's a much higher risk of atrial fibrillation. So there is considerable anxiety and confusion amongst patients who have AFib as to whether they should be exercising or not because, um, you know, they don't want to make their AFib worse. Secondly, they always worry about whether the whether exercising is safe when you have AFib. Uh, and finally, there's a lot of confusion as to exactly what kind of exercise to do to help the AFib. So I thought I'd try and answer those questions in this video. Okay. Last year, there was a very interesting study published in the Circulation Journal by a group of researchers from Norway, uh, headed by a chap called Malmo. Okay, and I'm going to put the link to the study on my Facebook page. So if you are interested, please do pop by. I'll also put a link on on um, on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> so this was a very interesting study because they took 51 patients who had AFib. Now the AFib was either paroxysmal, i.e., it came and went, or persistent. Um, in that it was there for more than seven consecutive days and either required cardioversion to get them out of it uh, <clears throat> or would go out of it by itself after seven days. So um, persistent or paroxysmal AFib. Okay? And these guys had been referred for an ablation for their atrial fibrillation because they were struggling with symptoms. So they were having bad symptoms from their AFib. They were not really tolerating it very well. They'd been referred for an ablation. And this group got in there and said, you know, we'll put you through this study. And what they did was they wanted to assess the effects of exercise on these patients with AFib. And so what they did was they implanted a loop recorder, a little device under the chest in these patients. And the advantage of that is that it allows you to measure the burden of atrial fibrillation very accurately, because sometimes AFib can be silent uh, how do you know how long it's going on for? So if you have a device which is measuring how much AFib there is, then you get a much more accurate estimation of exactly how much AFib is and whether your study, um, you know, using exercise does benefit the amount of AFib. So that's why they put this in. And then what they did was they divided this group of 51 patients into two groups, okay? One group was randomly assigned to an exercise program one group was randomly assigned just to do what they normally do, the control group, all right? And they collected <clears throat> the data. So the 26 patients were assigned to a 12-week aerobic interval training program. And 25 patients were assigned to a control group where they were just allowed to do whatever they wanted to, including the kind of exercises that they would normally do, all right? Now, these guys were not hugely overweight. Uh, their average height was 6 feet, and the weight was 93 kilos, and their BMI was around about 28. So they're not obese patients by any means. They're sort of average patients. Anyway, what did they find? At the end of the study, after 12 weeks of um, aerobic interval training, what they found was that the mean time in AFib increased from 10% to 14% in the control group, i.e. the group that was not put through the exercise program, the group that was just allowed to do their own thing. But in the group that went through the exercise program, the time in AFib 
reduced from 8.1% to 4.8%. So significant reduction in the amount of AFib patients were getting as measured by the loop recorder. But then you have to say, well, yes, that's in the loop recorder, but does that mean that the patient felt better? And the exercise group all reported a significant improvement, not only in their quality of life, but also they said that their AFib episodes had become less frequent. And when they did happen, they were less severe than before. So that's really interesting. So not only objectively do you get less AFib, but subjectively the sensation of AFib is a uh, uh, not as bad and the episodes of AFib don't occur as frequently. The patient's weights decreased by about 2 kilos in the group who had gone through the 12-week program compared to the control group, and their cholesterol levels also fell. The group that was exercised in them, the cholesterol levels fell. And very interestingly, they also measured the atrial function, the function of the atria by, measure, by using MRI scan, and they found that actually in this group, the group of patients who underwent through the exercise, underwent the exercise regime, in, those, in that group of patients, the atrial function also improved. So very, very interesting. And um, in all ways, seemed to, the exercise programs seemed to benefit the patients with atrial fibrillation. Um, and remember, these were symptomatic, pretty symptomatic patients who had actually been initially referred for an ablation. So that's, these are powerful data, okay? Uh, so this is a very important study because it shows how beneficial exercise can be in patients who have AFib. And that exercise is not just for patients who are very obese, but actually average patients with a BMI of 28. Even in those patients, um, the exercise not only reduced the amount of AFib they were getting, it made them feel better, they lost weight, their cholesterol levels came down, and their atrial function improved. Okay, So the next question is, well, how do you go about trying it for yourself? What did this exercise regime consist of? So if you wanted to try it out for yourself to see whether exercise benefits your AFib, what regime should you follow? And I'll read out what these researchers used in the hope that you'll be able to replicate that. Okay. So basically what they said was that you had to walk or run on a treadmill three times a week for 12 weeks, all right? And each session should start with a 10-minute warm-up at 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, which is obtained by exercise testing. So maximum heart rate is 220 minus age. So you want to get uh, in your 10-minute warm-up, you want to get up to 60 or 70% of your maximum heart rate. Then you need to do four minute intervals where you're getting your heart rate up to 85 to 95 percent of predicted maximum. Okay, four minute intervals of 85 to 95 percent of your predicted heart rate with three minutes of active recovery at 60 to 70 percent of the heart rate between the intervals. So, 10 minutes get your heart rate up to 60 to 70 percent, uh, then uh, <clears throat> go for four a minute intervals where you're getting your heart rate up to 85 to 95 percent interspersed with three minute recovery periods um, where the heart rate comes down to 60 to 70 percent so you're getting the heart rate up to 85 to 95 percent during exercise bringing it down to 60 to 70 percent and then going back and <clears throat> And this is a regime that seemed to work so well for these patients. So if you want to try it out for yourself, I would thoroughly encourage it. It's also worth saying that these patients were did the same thing regardless of whether they were out of AFib during the exercise or whether they were in AFib during the exercise. So just because you're in AFib doesn't necessarily mean that you can't exercise or that the exercise is dangerous to you. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Please consider sharing it. Uh, it means a lot to me if you share because it increases my subscriber base. And when I come home after a busy day, there's nothing better than to know that people are subscribing and commenting. And it just fills me with lots of enthusiasm and makes me really happy. So thank you so much. As I always say, um, please consider sharing it with any of your friends who might find it interesting. Um, uh, if they find it interesting, great. Otherwise, I'll bore them to sleep, and we know sleep is really good for AFib. All right, so all the best. Take care. Bye.